Hey everyone, welcome back to Sudotech. Today I'm going to be showing you how to connect to your chip with a serial connection from your computer. It's similar to SSH, except for it's going over a USB cable. Now you might remember the chip, which is the $9 mini computer, that I got through the Kickstarter campaign probably almost a year ago now, and it stopped working for me for a while because the flashing wasn't working to put a new operating system on it. It was just booting up to a chip logo screen and it wouldn't get past that and all the attempts I did to flashing weren't working. Luckily, in late 2016, they updated it, and it's now working for my chip. I just haven't gotten around to testing it until now. One of the things I've liked about using a chip is that I'm able to connect to it on my Windows machine, or it also works on a Mac or a Linux machine, of course, via Serial, which is a USB connection that the chip is already set up with, so I don't have to worry about networking, SSH, or reading the terminal through a fuzzy analog input. You can read this section of the chip documentation to see how you can do it for your individual system. I'm going to be going over it for Mac and Linux and then showing you how to do it on Windows. So for Windows, you're going to need PuTTY, which you can get right here. You probably already have it if you've done SSHing. Then you're going to want to open up your device manager. Now under ports, you might have a couple of ports here. I have the communications port, which is on COM1, and then the USB to serial connection is on COM7. That's the key that we're going to need to connect to it. Just remember COM7 in my case but whatever shows up right here on your computer. Now we can open up PuTTY and go to Serial right here. Just click one of these radio buttons and change this to COM7 from COM1 or change it from COM1 to whichever one you're at. Now NextThingCo recommends that we use a data rate of 115200. So we can punch that in. Some other data rates worked just fine for me, although I did have issues with some of the text encoding. So if you're having issues with that, just go back to this. Then you can go into open and it should show up with your Linux terminal on chip. Of course, you can log in. Now, if you're on a Mac or a Linux machine, it's a bit simpler or maybe a bit more complicated, but depending on what you know about the command line. Now, this is the Linux command line, the Ubuntu command line that comes with Windows 10. We can go ahead and pop this in. And for me, it's not going to work. It doesn't work if I say seven either. That's just because it's kind of a weird environment. I'm not sure how to get it working in here, but if you're on Windows, just use PuTTY. If you're on Linux, this should work just fine with Screen, and similarly on macOS. It is a slightly different key for the macOS version, and over here, there's a little bit of code that can just get the most recent connection that was created. You can do slash dev slash dty star, and that'll just give you everything, and that worked best for me on macOS when I was trying it. This wasn't working exactly, but I could just replace all of this with a star. And since I only had one serial device plugged in, it would just connect to that. Otherwise, you can LS it to figure out what is there and connect to the right device. So I hope this was helpful if you're just getting started with your chip. Now that I've got it working, you can look forward to more chip content in the future. So if you have any suggestions on projects or other things that I should do, please let me know down in the comments below. Either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.